are ready to talk about Hanukkah with a very special man, Rabbi Harry Rosenberg, who is a scholar, founder of WokeCourses.com, and a social entrepreneur. Hello and welcome. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah to you, and thanks for having me. Of here. course, of course. So you are so deeply involved in, you know, beyond the Judeans. You're involved in the whole community of the Israelites around the world, including, you know, the so-called lost tribes. Explain the holiday of Hanukkah. Is it really meant to be just for the Judeans and the Jews, because that's where the story of Hanukkah happened? That's a great question, because you see a lot of these groups around the world coming out and saying, hey, we're from the people of Israel, we're from the Israelite exile, and we're going to graft in and we want to be part of this, but you keep your Jewish rabbi Judean holidays to yourself, and we'll focus on the scripture laws together, you know, the scripture holidays. Hmm. So the real question arises, is Hanukkah a celebration for the greater house of Israel, or is it just for the remnants of the Judeans? who gave birth to what we now call the Jews. So I imagine in your opinion it is for the greatest house of Israel because this is, you know, so much of your work is in working with communities around the world. Uh, I guess there's an interesting coincidence in the, the timeline of the story of Hanukkah with what was going on in Afghanistan at that time. Right, so I would argue that it is an Israelite holiday based on two principles, one on the historical and one on spiritual. So we'll start with the historical one, as you said. Most people don't realize that the invasion of ancient Greek into Afghanistan happened during the same exact years that the conquest towards Israel happened. It was one big swoop towards the Middle East. And so when the Jews, or the Judeans, were actually going through their persecution of where they were not able to do circumcision or learn Torah, exactly that was happening in Afghanistan where the Greeks were trying to Hellenize the culture. Mm. Now some may say, hey, you know, that's 2,000 something years ago. It could be a different people than the Pashtuns today who are close to 50 million people who claim to be from the children of Israel. And we'll say it's not the case because what's another term for Afghanistan is the graveyard of empires because every empire that came fell. And so you see the Greeks dealt with these people called the Pashtun who another term for them is the Bani Israel. So one of the greatest miracles is when the Jews defeated the Greeks around, let's say, 150 BC in that time frame was the same exact year the collapse of the Greek Empire in Afghanistan. So what are your final thoughts as we're approaching Hanukkah and, you know, here we are able to be here right now on television around the world talking about this. What, you know, what is our job now in our times to kind of now bring it forward to, to finish the job? Boom, I hear that. <laughs> so they have, um, the menorah in general, um, it has uh, seven branches for the temple. And the concept of a menorah, and Hanukkah is, you know, we have eight, is Lamala Manateva, but Shiva Panea Menorah is symbolic for the seven orifices on our face. Our two ears, two eyes, two nostrils, and our mouth. We have seven holes. It's so basically when you light the, the menorah, you're basically saying you have to elevate your orifices. What does that mean? Use my eyes for proper things, use my mouth for speaking properly, use my ears. And what that actually does is create a clea. You become a vessel where you can then receive influx from heavens that are coming down at this period of time. So basically, it's like if you have a cup with some holes in it, or if you have a plastic cup and I pour hot water into it, it'll melt right through the cup. But if you're a glass cup, if you're reinforced spiritually, and there's energy coming down into this world, you can actually contain it, hold it, share it with other people, and manifest great things. So we should take advantage of this time where there is something coming down from a higher level. The word mazal really means uh, a drip from a higher source to a lower source, which that's they say the word nazal, nozzle from a sink mm -hmm. comes from. But there is a drip going to be happening during this period of Hanukkah, and we should be worthy to receive it, hold it, share it. Thank you so much for this insightful conversation, and happy Hanukkah, and may we continue to share light to the world. I mean, very cool. I had a blast hanging out with you and talking about these things. As always, thank you so much. Let's do it. And don't go anywhere, because we're going to be back with much more of our special Hanukkah episode right after the break.